Let's first watch a demo of Cursor creating its own tools. Here we take a look at the Cursor rules file, which we will look in detail. And this is the, uh, we are just asking it, what is the latest pri NVIDIA price and what are the contents of the change log for Cursor? And after that, uh, it's immediately thinking that it needs to create a tool. It is looking for tools.py, but it doesn't exist because it's instructed to do so just in case it already has the tools. And then it's actually going to now create the tools, functions to fetch stock prices and web page contents. So it is generalizing. If you look here, it has created tools.py file with get stock price and get web page content, which takes in this one takes in the ticker argument and this one takes in the URL argument. And after that, uh, it's going to run the tools as a terminal command. As you can see, it's calling the get web page content uh, importing and calling get stock price with NVIDIA and get web page content with the URL we have provided. And it has gotten uh, some results and then it's actually gonna run it again, but it is an error for NVIDIA stock price, but successfully fetched the cursor change log. It's going to actually modify uh, the, Yahoo f the function for get stock price and run it again. And now, I don't know if you saw it, but it has actually uh, gotten the stock price plus the content for the change log. And now it is writing, answering the question that NVIDIA's latest stock price is this, and the latest cursor update is version 0.43, which is um, correct, I believe. And now uh, we are asking it to write it to file. It's creating a script to run it. We run it, and now we have the results written into a file. And now, what if we start a new session? So let's say you close your cursor window and open it. It is still has the tools.py file. What would happen here? We are asking what is the price of Apple? And it wants to check the tools.py. After it checks it, see, great, we already have a stock up to get stock price function. So then it just calls it with Apple and we get the app price for Apple and it actually answers it. So this is it. We can uh, review the code for this, but we can first run this so we can see how it would work in real time. Let's ask it a math question, a difficult uh, multiplication. Uh, and it's going to read the tools.py file first, and it's going to update it. Sorry, uh, we don't have the tools.py because I've deleted it. This created the tool to calculate the upper so to calculate any numbers two numbers with an operation so it generalized pretty well here it wants us to run this command let's run it and the result is 210 2 million 100,000 something and it answers us uh, and now if you were to ask what is uh, like divided by 45 then it should See, it wants to call the already existing tool. So you can actually build entire agentic workflows straight from, um, straight from uh, cursor, sorry. Okay, and so let's take a look. The important thing here is the cursor rules file. And uh, let's just read it. And I will also provide this in my, in my Patreon for free. Uh, you just have to become a free uh, patron. Let's see what's in here real quick, and this would be a quick video, really. But before we continue, I'd like to mention that you can find all my free LLM-powered coding videos for all 400 plus of them at my website, echohive.live. And if you do become a paying patron, you get to download the source code for each and every one of them conveniently. For example, so turn sales calls into deals. You just click on it, it takes you to Patreon, and you can find the uh, source code here attached as a zip file. And also check out my 1000X Cursor course if you're interested in getting better with Cursor. I think this would be really invaluable. You can watch the first chapter for free and um, preview each chapter for two minutes. And I will be updating the course with new agentic workflows. So essentially it just runs off of this uh, Cursor rules file. And if we start with saying general guidelines for creating utilizing tools in tools.py, Initial assessment before creating new tools, read through tools.py to understand the existing tools and their functionalities. Tool creation, create new tools as functions within tools.py. If tools.py doesn't exist, create it. So we want cursor to create these new tools as functions and ensure that tools are designed to be imported and executed via terminal commands, not run directly. The reason is 
when cursor actually runs these terminal commands with the agentic composer, it is a tendency to actually just run files such as you know Python space main.py. But instead, what we wanted to do is use this dash c command and actually run a Python script here. If, if, you, if you see, from tools import calculate and run that function. So essentially, we wanted to execute some simple uh, Python code importing these functions and executing them. So that's what we are going to try to describe. Function design. Develop tools for tasks requiring precision and those not easily executable manually. Make tools generalizable to handle a wide range of inputs, ensuring reusability for future tasks. That's why when it created this tool, it didn't only do multiplication, it did calculate, and it also put an operation argument so it can actually calculate any operation. For example, instead of creating a function for a specific stock or URL, design it to accept any stock ticker or URL, and it applied this, generalized this to calculation here just fine. Name functions that reflect their general nature, ensuring they're not limited to specific use cases. This, this enhances flexibility, adaptability, future replication. So I actually have another method of doing this, which I'll make a separate video about. Essentially, this method, uh, doesn't require you to d define any function definition. Everything is self-contained in the tools.py or whatever you want to name it. Uh, you can create any function there. As long as cursor reads that file, it'll know what tools it has. Okay, uh, all right. Output, tools must always print their output. This is very important because normally with a function calling style scripts, if you've written any, you'll know that the general loop system will actually uh, take whatever the function is returning. Here, that is not the case because I don't think, I mean, this wasn't designed for that purpose. This was just designed to run some files, maybe pip install requirements. So essentially, this doesn't have access to what the function returns. This is a terminal, but it has access to what it prints, right? And so that's why we're saying tools must always print their output. They can also return them. I'm not sure if it is returning. Yeah, there is no harm in returning, but that's not really doing us any good. Okay, execution. Do not run tools.py directly, right? We don't want it to run files. Import functions, execute them with the correct parameters via terminal. Always use the python-c and then imports and whatnot. Commands to run tools, ensuring no additional scripts are created for execution. Generalization, thoroughly assess into the potential range of inputs, design functions to accommodate the broadest possible spectrum of arguments. And we've seen it do that with this calculator, or if it was a scraper, you know, you, you, you wanted to take any uh, URL. Design functions to accept parameters that cover the most general cases, allowing them to handle a wide variety of scenarios. Ensure that functions can handle various data types and structures, allowing for maximum flexibility. If a request involves distinct tasks, create separate functions for each to maintain clarity and modularity, regularly review and refactor functions to enhance their generalization capabilities. Okay, error handling. Yeah, if an error occurs, rewrite the functions as we've seen in the demo. It did just that when it failed to fetch the price for NVIDIA. Script management. Avoid creating additional .py scripts for function execution. So this is another thing it might try to do. For example, if you were, now that it has this tool calculate, it can have a tendency to create a new tool, like, you know, let's say cal calculate.py and import this calculate uh, function into it and then run that file because it just wants to run files, right? I mean, there's no harm in that. That would still get us the result, but I just decided not to let it do that. That's why the script management, that's why we're passing, again, the python-c command. Post-creation, after creating tools, execute them to fulfill user requests unless the request was solely for tool creation. Yeah, so this is about it. I hope you enjoyed this. This really opens up quite a lot of possibilities. Let me know what you think or what you do with it. Requirements are pretty simple. Well, it wrote these requirements, actually. There is no requirements. There is no script. We're just using cursor, which is a bit interesting, right? Again, like I said, uh, please do check out my website. You can find my uh, Twitter link, GitHub link there. You can join the Discord. You can sign up for updates. Um, yeah, I work on this every day, and I try to produce as many interesting projects such as Genesis Mine. I'm sure you'll, I mean, there's something here for everyone. Check it out, and if you do become a patron, I greatly appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye now. 
listen to me. I've been trying to toad, and you know, like I like toading. The fact that I can code and make things happen, but how do I do it? I mean, fast with AI. I heard about it. It's easy. So、um, I came across Thousand X Cursor course. And that's great, you know. It just made everything super silky smooth. It just, it just worked. I'm, I'm telling you.、Uh, Thousand X, you're coding. 